so this is a decompression walk. Um, I'm trying to do more solo of these with Zephyr. Um, but essentially, he leads the walk. So I take him out to a place where there aren't going to be a lot of people at a time when there won't be a lot of people. Um, he's got a 50 foot long line. You can also do these with 15 foot long lines, 30 foot. I go with 50 because he's a monster baby. You can see I have a short leash on him. I'd prefer to have it tied up better, but I'm having a hard time with that. Um, the reason that I do this, and this is kind of a new thing that I'm trying. Good boy! Um, good Zephyr! Who's my good boy? <laughs> um, he's starting to slow down. The reason that I have the short one tied is so that if we do pass any people, um, this long lead is really hard to manage him with. Um, so I can pull up the short lead and use that. He also, I'm experimenting, um, as a sled dog, he seems to like feeling that pressure on his chest of a pull. And so I've been kind of experimenting with trying to use the short lead tied to the long lead um, as a method of helping to give him that pulling feeling without him actually needing to pull me. Because um, it seems to be a feeling he really enjoys is the pressure on his chest. And so I'm trying, experimenting with ways to give him that uh, without actual excessive pulling for me. Um, I'm not doing it right now. Generally, I manage my long lead better, but I've got my phone going, so and it's pretty chill out here. So we do this for 20 or 30 minutes. Um, again, I'm trying to do more of these solo with him. Oh, his harness is getting tugged over. Um, we did these a lot when I first got him, and then with getting an orange tempest, I just kind of fell down on it, and I feel really bad, because he does so well. He's such a good boy when it's just the two of us out. He just gets so excited when an orange, when an orange tempest are with him. Um, so yeah, these are for, these do a couple of things. Number one, they're for his mental health. This is a chance for him to be a dog in a safe environment. He can sniff, he can run around, um, he can apparently eat grass. Um, there's so many things that he can do out here that just let him like be a dog without needing to worry about walking in a heel or loose leash or anything like that. You know, it's not me being like, all right, let's go. This is not a structured walk. This is a do whatever you want after this walk is for you kind of walk, you know? So it's good for his mental health. Let's him be a dog. Let's him get out a lot of um, energy. And um, it also gives him agency because now he gets to decide. You know, sometimes I'll guide him down a path like this one. He thought we were going to go back to the car, but I wanted to take him on a longer one. Oh, we found a squirrel. <laughs> Good boy. He didn't bark at it, though. Um, it gives him more agency. Like I said, I'll guide him down a path if I know that I want to go on a longer one. And he chooses a short path. I might turn him down a different one. But, hi. He decides when we stop. He decides when we go. You know, he gets to decide most of that stuff. I'll turn him around when it's time to go, but it gives him, and I'll follow his cues when I can, you know, let him. So it gives him agency as a dog to, and that can, is very confidence building for dogs and for humans, you know. Um, it's a great confidence builder for them to feel like they have agency in their lives and choices. And so I like to give him that in a safe and structured environment. Um, it also gives him a break from the usual triggers of a walk. People, other dogs, things like that. So this is a, for the most part, a trigger-free walk for him, which is really nice, really good break for both of us. Um, I don't really work on many skills. I don't really work on a recall much on these because it's not what it's for. I cue him sometimes if I have to, um, obviously. But for the most part, I let him do his thing. Uh, and I, I do continue to reward. So I treat to my pocket and I do continue to reward. You'll see sometimes he'll look back at me and I'll give him a good boy. Um, he's not really into the treats, especially on these kinds of walks. So I don't really worry about that too much. Um, good boy! See, he just looked back at me. Uh, so when he checks in with me, I give him a good boy. And I, yes, 
Um, he gets to pee, he gets to mark territory, he loves doing that. Uh, and then I'll give him a treat if he comes back and he wants it, but a lot of times he doesn't. He's just like, I get to run back to mom and I'm gonna run back out and I get to run. Running is, <laughs> running is honestly a reward in and of itself for him. So I give him lots of time to do that. So he's feeling good. So I just wanted to go over a little bit about these decompression walks, which are a very important part of many reactive dogs training. Um, and really any dog, any dog's mental health. Um, but for a lot, ooh, are you okay, buddy? Um, that's why I wanna have that stupid thing tied up better. But for a lot of reactive dogs, um, this is a very important part of their training and their um, healing. I think better than, better than their fixing, but their healing, you know? Um, so yeah, there's a little, a little tidbit about our walk.